Ich grüße euch ganz herzlich in dem wunderbaren Namen des Herrn, Jesus Christus, unser Herrn, Heilen und kommende König. Halleluja! Halleluja. Oh, I feel right at home already. <laughs> Andre, did you understand that? Stand up and translate that for me. <laughs> I, you have buoyed me up this morning in your worship, in the spirit of the service today, the singing and prayer. I just felt this. And folks, that's good. That's good. You don't come to church to be depressed, do you? <laughs> so it's wonderful to be in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Brother Glazer and your wife for inviting us to come in this congregation. God bless you. We are not really strangers to you. Hi. But we are brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God. What joy it is to call Hello, brother. Hello, sister. The great family of God. I, I have uh, several motivations for being here today, and I hope I can fulfill them all while I have time. I preached in a little church in Thailand, way up in the mountains of Thailand. Little church, not bigger than this section over here. They had three clocks on the wall. I got the hint. <laughs> Brother Mike, I just see one clock here this morning. I'm glad to have my wife with me. This is my wife, Esther. Come, dear. In Thailand, this is come, not this. It's this. Brother Mike, would you help my wife please come? We are so glad to be here and to be a part of this service this morning. I have brought some literature. Some of you have seen this already. It's on the back table back there. Please help yourself. Also, there's four little books back there of this size. I have brought them here before. If you have not received one, you're welcome to them. The little books I've written for our overseas ministry, they've all been translated in foreign languages. It's called The God of Two Faces back there. And this is next called Missions, the Church in Action, a little story about my wife and I. Third one is Four Views of Calvary. I wrote this especially for the Chinese people. And then secondarily, thirdly or fourthly, called First Steps. This is for new converts. Where do we go from here? And someone just finding the Lord, why it kind of gives them direction. There are four volumes. You're welcome to have them. They normally cost $500 a piece, but this, but this morning they're free, okay? <laughs> so after service, we'd like to get one back there on the table. And uh, this little piece of literature, please feel free. It tells, helps tell the story. Uh, weren't you moved this morning by that? Visual from Africa. Hello? Makes you want to go there, doesn't it? I um, showed a video recently of our work in Thailand, and it's, it's just, well, I started crying again because your heart is so moved by the things you hear and you see, and you want to respond in some way. And uh, I, I just wish there was more of me. What I mean, not this way. I mean, more of me. <laughs> if you could multiply yourself, in, uh, uh, you'd do that. It's cloning spiritual, Brother Michael. I'm... Cloning, huh? It's... Ah. I, I wish I was more than what I am. Now, I weigh 220. No. I weigh 100 kilo, but that's not enough. I wish there was more of me to send more of me out. That's what I'm trying to say. You understand that? Oh, thank you. Thank you. This is my wife, Esther. 
you don't know her. She is she has uh, been my wife for going on fifty eight years. Fifty eight years, really? And we're not even and we're not even that old yet. <laughs> and uh, we've been ministering together for a number of years, singing together, preaching the gospel, doing the work of the Lord from Australia to Alaska, and uh, and still are by the grace of God. Here's an old song that you know us. We sang last time we were here. I thought. And we only know three or four songs, and we just wear them out until. So we'll wear this and out again one more time, okay? And this lets us know that God is always God in good days or bad days. On the mountain or in the valley, he is still God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. We don't sing like we used to sing because we're a little more mature than we used to be. And so we've got to uh, slow things down a little bit, but we'll do our very best, Okay. Well, well, we're ready for the mic. Well, life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But then things change. And you're down in the valley. Oh, don't lose faith, for you're never alone. For the God on the mountain is to God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make it right. God of the good times is to God in the bad times and the God of the day is to God in the night. You believe that? You talk of faith when you're up on the mountain. But talk comes so easy when life's at its best. But it's down in the valley of trial and temptations. That's when your faith is really put to the test. You say, Ben, that? But the God on the mountain is to God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make it right. And the God of the good times is to God in the bad times. And the God of the day is to God in the night and the God of the day is to God in the night oh yes amen amen thank you brother Mike for accompanying us there Praise the Lord. Well, it's just it's just truth, isn't it? Amen. I I am not known to be short winded. I'm a long winded preacher. If you not don't believe me, ask my wife. One of the motivations I felt in my heart when I came here to Idaho Falls in this service, I, I'm looking for a young man, a young woman. You know what a relay race is? A relay race is you, one man does a little lap, and passes the baton, next guy, he does a little lap, and he passes the baton, and the guy who ends up while he actually wins the race, doesn't he? Now he's working, they work together. 
I'm 80 years old. I'm looking for someone to pass the baton to. Is he here in Idaho Falls? Some lady, some young man who, who is tender, pliable, sensitive to the voice of the Spirit of God, and, and uh, God calls them out and says, Come, follow me, and I'll make you become a fisher of men. So I come here looking for the young man, the young woman, who, who will respond to that appeal. Also, I'm here because as Jesus spoke to the apostle Peter before, he, before Pentecost, he said, Peter, when you are converted, go strengthen your brethren. Go strengthen them. And at the, after the resurrection of the Lord, Jesus said to Peter, you love me? <laughs> oh, Lord, you know I love you. Then go feed my lambs. You love me, Peter? Oh, Lord, you, why do you keep asking me that? Go feed my sheep. Twice, huh? So that's another motivation I've come today, to strengthen you in your faith and to feed you if I can. I hope you like my cooking. <laughs> Sister Mary did a classic job last night and this morning. And thirdly, thirdly, Paul wrote to the Corinthian church and he wrote to them to confirm them, confirm them. That just simply means you go in the right direction, believe in the right thing, don't stop, confirm. And that brings us next thought that when Jesus comes, and we believe he's going to come back again, just like he said, he is going to confirm his church once and for all and say, come. And that will be the final confirmation. Huh? Hallelujah. When he says, that one's mine, and that one's mine, and that one's mine, and that one's mine. Come, come, come. I don't know how he's going to do that. I just know he's going to do that. But that's not my business. That's his business. Hello? Amen. And I'm quite sure that he who, who could speak the world into existence can call his church home or say to his bride, come, my fair one, my loved one, come away. However he wants to do it, it'll be all right, won't it? It'll be all right? Amen. Sadly, Jesus said, Two will be working in the field, one should be taken and the other left. Two will be sleeping in a bed, one should be taken and the other left. Two will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. You figure that out, who leaves and who stays. But it just tells us that there comes a time when God is going to bring all things to a conclusion. It's called the final consummation of all things. He brings things to a conclusion. And uh, uh, when and how, I don't know. That's his business. Again, I will not be a false prophet and try to interpret the time of Jesus' coming. I'm a true prophet says he is coming. I would be a false prophet to say he's coming tomorrow or the next day or 1st of March. I would be a false prophet. Huh? You got that? Let's not go any further. That's enough of that. But I... <laughs> I, I'm motivated this morning by those motivations, and I hope you will understand what I'm saying, and etc. I have so much I could say today. I got several pages of notes, and they're all they're all good notes too. I'll sell them to you for a small fee, like fifteen thousand dollars, something like that. I, uh, but I I I have enough wisdom to know that I cannot compete with fried chicken. I know that. My, my title this morning, my message this morning begins in the 12th chapter of Hebrews. Do you have your Bible? 12th chapter of Hebrews. And we'll read two verses, verse 1 and verse 2. 
Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 2. Stand with me, please, for the reading of the word. Open your Bibles. Verse 1, verse 2. Wherefore, seeing we are also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that doth so easily beset us. And let us run. Let us run with patience. The race is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. Father, this is your word. We bow our hearts before you. Open the word to us today. Help us to understand and receive and bow our wills to you in Jesus' name, I pray. You may be seated. It is, it is a thrill to me personally to know that Jesus is the author. Jesus is the author. It, it means to me that before there was time, before there was worlds, universes, before there was anything, God authored his program. Another word is planned. He planned it. He's the author. He is the architect. He drew the plans. He drew them out in his mind. He even spoke of things that were not as though they already were. That's amazing, isn't it? He's the, the author. And then <clears throat> Hebrews doesn't leave us there. He's and the finisher of our faith. That means what God started, he is well able to bring to fullness. What he began, he's well able to finish. Now, what that means in a large general theological sense or universal sense, what God's doing around the world, he's also doing in this world in yours, in mine. And when it began in you, he is well able to bring it to fruition, the end. I don't know. I, I tried some while back to discover a title of this message, and I come up with four. Number one, God is not through with me yet. Aren't you glad? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Secondarily, a title. Ah, just grow up. Oh, okay. Sounds good. You mean I haven't, haven't arrived yet? No, son, you have not arrived yet. Thirdly, God brought us out that he might bring us in. Well, that sounds good too, doesn't it, huh? He did that to Israel, brought them out of Egypt to bring in the land of promise. But that wasn't the end of the matter. Or fourthly, How's this for a title? What God started, he is well able to finish. If you'd go with me to Thailand and land in the city of Chiang Mai, and took a little tuk, tuk tuk, rode around through the city and around the area, you would discover there are multitudes of buildings skeleton buildings that were started about 10, 12 years ago when the economy was strong and people were in the building mode and they built great st structures. That is, never completed them. They're just uh, concrete pillars and, 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 and uh, floor after floor, three, four, five floors high, great pillars. And uh, they look like the bones of a body now with no flesh, nothing on just just it, 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 it's buildings that someone had a dream of but were never able to complete. It's so sad. 
It's just a, it's, it's so biblical, huh? Jesus says when a man begins to build a tower, he first of all sits down and he, what does he do? He counts the cost. Was he, is he able to complete what he's now going to start? It's like a man going to war, Jesus said. He wants to know, first of all, the army enemy is coming. Yes, so are, am I capable with 10,000 men to conquer an army has 20,000 men? And so he, he counts the cost. See, well, whoa, that's good business. That's good. That's logic, isn't it? Huh? Indeed. So, so I, I, I feel that God wants us to know today that what God has begun in your life, he's not through doing it yet. And when I admit that to myself and you admit that to yourself, you're saying, hey, I'm a long way from perfect. I need something else. Will you raise your hand with me? I'm not there yet. Praise the Lord. It is, it is uh, uh, to me a great confidence in my own spirit to know that he is the finisher of our faith. Finisher. I went through a time, oh, a few weeks ago, I was driving my car you know, over in Caldwell area, and I just sort of heard the voice of Spirit say, trust me. Trust me. Hmm, strange. Trust? Trust me. It's easy in my age level and experience to think, well, I got this pretty well figured out. I know the answers to the questions. I, I, I know. So, <laughs> Lord, just leave me alone. I'll get, no, no, no. And I heard the Spirit say to me, trust me. Trust me. Years ago in Bible school, I had a teacher named Jet Witherspoon was her name. And she said this to, one time in an illustration. She said, trust is sort of like you come coming to the edge of the pre pre precipice like this. And God says, take a step. Logic says, no, no, there's no bridge there. Take a step. Oh, no, I can't see. It's not there. Trust me. Which means as you put your foot out there, God's going to build a bridge for you. One footstep at a time. Trust me. Now, honey, that wasn't that funny. <laughs> Trust me. And so... I, I can only believe now that God, what God has begun in our lives, he is well able to complete and bring to fullness and fruition and maturity and ripeness, and we become the man or the woman that God wants us to be after his plan and his pattern because he's the author and he's the finisher of our faith. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you who are working with children by a little short testimony. My mother and father were ministers in 1942. Whew, that goes back a long time, doesn't it? Huh? During the war, Second World War. My mother and father felt led of the Lord to go to Alaska to work on the Clinket Indians in southeast Alaska. It was back before Alaska was a state. It was a territory. And because the war was on, we had to have army permission to go there because the Japanese had already conquered the Aleutian Island chain and were moving into that country. Some of you historians remember that. And so I was a little child, uh, first grade, uh, maybe second grade, uh, maybe first grade, and I remember well that we got in my little mind the idea we're going to leave Montana, Washington, and we're going to go to Alaska. Where is Alaska? Didn't have a clue. Who are the Clinton Indians? <laughs> Absolutely. No, I have no idea. It's like, no, where's Uganda? It's over oh, oh, by Australia somewhere, I think. No, uh, I had no idea. But I remember as a little boy, we'd have church in the fish house. Actually, it's the net house where the Indians dried the nets and, and, and repaired them. I remember in the fish hat, hash, uh, house that as a little boy sitting there on a pile of fish nets, as mom and dad were singing and praying, playing uh, their songs and preaching the gospel, I remember as a little boy the seed that was sown into my heart 
That was 1942. So, Sunday school teachers, I say, that, I say this to you. Despise not the little ones. Forbid them not, Jesus said. Bring them to me. And here's the point. Mark says, he laid his hands on them and blessed them. I'm convinced, mom and dad, that somebody's going to lay their hands on your kids. Somebody is going to touch your children, positively, negatively. And we're living in an age when, when most girls 10 years old have already been sexually molested. Someone's going to lay hands on our kids. So I'm convinced if we can plant some seed in the hearts of our young people, like Paul said, I've planted Paul is watered, but God gave the increase. And could it be today in Idaho Falls Church, the Cornerstone Church, could it be today that there is a heart somewhere where something is being planted in their hearts, deep in their souls, and that seed, if watered by the work of the Spirit and the prayer of God's people, as they pray and water that seed, God will do his work and confirm his word in them. And we will see group blossoming out of their lives, young men and young women who will blaze a trail somewhere around the world. So I come to look for that one who will take the baton. Say, so yes, Brother Nye, yes. What God began, he is well able to finish. Well able to finish. Paul said, he hath it begun a, work, a good work in you. He who has begun a good work in you. <laughs> all I can say is, when, after God saved me, I was better. How about you all? It was a good work, wasn't it? Huh? Amen. <laughs> good work. Amen. You wouldn't want to have known me before I got saved. No, you wouldn't let, no, no, no. You wouldn't let me in the church door. But he did a good work in me. And he that began that good work is well able, well able to complete. And Paul said, unto the day of Jesus Christ. There's a time factor involved there. It's not yet the day of Jesus Christ as far as his coming is concerned. He hasn't come yet, right? Ah, no, his, that day is still coming. So that must mean he is still working in, the peop in people's lives, doing the good work to bring them into the fullness of the statue of Jesus Christ. He's still working and will continue to work until that day when he says, okay, that's enough. Hmm. I'm afraid when he comes, I, well, I want to be ready. I'll be I'm ready as far as I'm concerned, but as far as he's concerned, there's still some work to do in me, maybe in you too, huh? Hello? In the first chapter of John, John chapter 1, Jesus said this, but as many as received him. What does that mean? Well, Jesus was offered to those people, and some said, yes, they received him, and some said, no. So the, 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 the privilege of yes or no belongs to mankind, I believe. God does not impose upon anybody. He's a gentleman. He'll not force himself on anybody. So as many had received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Power to become means process. I thought when I repent of my sins, were baptized and received the Holy Ghost, whoop, that's the end of the story. No. No, no, no. That was the beginning of the story. And that was the year 1950. How many years ago has that been? 50 years You do the math. It's been a long time. But God's not through with, with me yet, neither with you. For to them who received him, to them gave you power 
to become the sons of God. Do you know, John 14 teaches us that God, the Lord Jesus himself, when he comes again, he comes to receive us. Read it in John 14. Receive us. What does that mean? He comes to get that which is offered to him. He offered himself to us and we received him. Good. Now we want to offer ourselves to him that he might, when he comes, receive us. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Page one of my 10 page notes. Who was the man in the Bible stopped the sun from coming up and doing it? But Joshua? Do you remember the Old Testament story? He, he, he asked the Lord for a longer day. Who was that? Come on, you student, huh? Yeah, I thought so. So, would you command the sun to stand still a minute before I finish up the sermon? Yeah. Okay. Paul said, Corinthian church, he said, I want you to know as we receive the Lord and follow him, we are changed. Hear me now. We're changed from glory to glory. From glory to glory. What does that mean? That means if you serve God one year, then you're one year down the trail. You should know God one year better than you knew him a year ago. Is that what that means? It means if you serve the Lord 10 years, you, you should be 10 years down the road, down the path that leads to glory to glory. And you should know God 10 years better than you knew him 10 years ago. Follow me there? It's a little development principle. Now, I've served the Lord since I was 16 years old. Now I'm 56. That's not right. 57. No, not right. So I received the Holy Ghost in 1950. That's been a day or two ago. What that means, I should be far more mature now than it was 65 years ago. Follow me there? I should be, I don't use the word old much anymore. I use the word ripe. I should be riper. Because someday he's going to come and pluck the fruit, huh? The farmer is going to come and have a harvest, and I want to be ready when he comes to get this harvest. You won't forget that, will you? Praise the Lord. What does this mean? I'm saying to us, church, today, that which God began in us, whenever that was in your life, a year ago, a month ago, 10 years ago, 40, 50, 60 years ago, however long it was, God is still working in your life to make you to be what he wants you to be. Now, in conclusion this morning, he, he is the master former. Isaiah three times called God the potter. Israel was the clay. Three times in the book of Isaiah. And, and the potter has a right to form that clay into the image or whatever thing the potter sees in his mind or plans, a bowl, a vase, a cup, a saucer, a plate. God has the right to do that because he's the potter. Uh, and let me say, we're the clay. Hello? And we're the clay. He has the right because of his sovereignty. That's a nice word. Big theological word. Sovereignty. Oh, that's German. Sovereignty of God means he can do what he wants to do. Oh, I don't like the way you look. I don't look. You gotta remake me. No, no. He made you just like you are. Oh, if I were just prettier. Yeah, me too. But that's. <laughs> but I'm so. That's not his fault. That's your fault. I was just thicker, a little thinner. I had some more candy to eat or something. You know, I'd, 
Never mind. What I'm saying is, God, if we allow him to work in our lives, he will make us and mold us to be what he wants us to be. As a little lad in 1942, I knew nothing from right or wrong. I just was a bad little kid, ran up and down stairs and so on. I had no idea what God had in mind. I had no idea what God planted in my little heart, but God knew. He planted something in my heart I never, ever got away from. And I didn't give my life to the Lord until I was 16 years old. And those interim times there were not good times. They were bad times. But God was there. God was there protecting the seed that was sown in my heart. And one day, one day as a 16-year-old teenager, any 16-year-olds here today? I don't know. As a 16-year-old kid, wild as a goose, I was a wild dude. I really was. But I knelt at the altar, and I bowed my knee before him. Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. I had no idea where that would be. I'll say what you want me to say. I had no idea you wanted me to be a preacher. God forbid, I wanted to be a something wild, you know. I'll say what you want me to say, be, and go. I had no idea. But I remember this. Hot tears run down my face, weeping before the Lord. Didn't understand it all. Didn't have a clue what all was meaning. I just know there's a prompting of the Holy Spirit that said, ha come on, son, I'm calling you now. And maybe we don't understand what's happening in the minds of little guys and little girls. Maybe we don't understand the struggle of the teenage mind. We don't understand the pressures of the peer pressure and the laws of wild nature today. We don't understand all those things, but above and beyond, there's a God in heaven that began to work in you, and he's well able to bring it to conclusion someday. If we are willing to say, you're the potter, and I'm the clay. And so there's great confidence in my heart today that he that began a good work in me will complete it someday. I find great security in knowing he's the author and he's the finisher of my faith. So I'm not afraid about tomorrow. I'm not afraid about the big thing that people talk about. brings no fear, zero fear, because my confidence is in him who is the finisher of my faith. Hold me there. Oh, I got some eschatology con. Convictions, and I can straighten you out on the word of prophecy. I got, a, I got all the answers, all the things. I can expound revelation. Oh, yeah, indeed, I can do that. Maybe. But one thing I'm very confident is that God began to work in me as a young lad. He's never stopped working in my life. And mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, little girl, little guy, those guys. The impression of the Holy Spirit beyond our English language, the Holy Spirit knows the language of the heart. And he implants something in the fertile soil of the soul of young men and young women. He plants the seed. And you, the church, will water that seed. And God will give the increase. Can't you believe that? I'm looking for someone to pass the baton to. I'm looking for another fisher of men. I'm looking for someone to step in the gap. I'm looking for someone. I'm 80 years old. It's time to retire. Hello? Someone say amen. I'll quit right after church, okay? Yeah. yeah, it's time for someone to step up and say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Could be a man. Could be a woman. It could be someone with other capabilities. 
But I'm totally convinced now. Oh. That he who began building will complete it. There's a beautiful prophetic word in Daniel chapter 2. It says that he has given a kingdom of which there will be no end. It says his kingdom will grow until it influences the whole world. The whole world. I wouldn't want to argue the point this morning, but the gospel is preached in so many countries of the world today. Thank God. Please don't believe everything you read in the newspapers here on the television news. We have a nice word in German. Das ist doch Quatsch. Translate that for me. Never mind. <laughs> Thank you. Don't believe it. Believe the book. And the book says his church is going to grow and grow and grow until it fills the whole earth. Can you believe that? When God calls his church home, they're going to rise out of the dust of the earth of a sin-cursed world and rise to meet the Lord in the air. And there'll be those out of Africa and Australia, South America, out of Asia, or every continent of the world, they're going to rise up to meet the Lord. And so shall we, Paul says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. So don't despair. If you're going through a trial, God's just saying no to you on some things. Yeah, but I need healing for my body. Well, God can say no. Hello? I want a miracle. Never mind. God can say no. He can say yes. That's the kind of God we serve. After all, God calls himself Father. And you are my sons and my daughters, says the Almighty. Hello? Amen. And the Almighty has declared he's going to complete what he started. Brother Mike, do you have a course? I have a course. Do you have a course? It's an old, old chorus. I used, to, I used to weep and cry singing this old chorus. Here's how it goes. Have thine own way, Lord, stand with me. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. That's right. Mold me and make me after Father, oh, Jesus, oh, I feel your presence very close right now. And whatever you want to do, Lord, this morning in all of our lives, please do that. We're the clay. We're not to demand what you make of us or don't make of us. We're to submit ourselves as clay to the potter. Mold us and make us Lord. You've blessed, Lord, the pastor of this church and this, these believers and church family. Bless them so, Lord. We feel that and we see that. But don't stop now. Open the doors of service to us. Open the doors of opportunity to, to, to minister your name to our world and to the world. Thank you, Jesus. 
we will believe and we will trust and we will not be afraid because you're the Lord. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Raise your right hand by saying, Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. yielded and still.